hi. Um, my name's Damien or Damo. You can find me on the forums under uh, Damo1271 and um, I do the uh, Blair Christmas Lights show um, up at Blair. I've been doing it for a few years now. Um, last year I uh, found that I needed a null pixel in my show and I'm not going to go into too much detail about what actually a null pixel is but as you uh, have probably heard really they're, they're pixels that are inserted in a long data run, I'll move out of the way of the projector, they're inserted in a long data run in order to maintain the quality of the signal. Um, and I found that um, trying to run signals for you know, sort of 10 metres over four core alarm cable just wasn't quite doing it for me. And um, I was having all of these sort of random events and uh, everything like that. So I found I needed some null pixels. The next thing was, I didn't really, uh, up until last year, I'd sort of been toying with pixels. I didn't really know how to make one, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I invented or, or thought up this way of doing them and um, thought I'd uh, come along today and uh, share it with people. Hopefully it's not how everybody does it, otherwise it's going to be a very short presentation. Um, I'll just pass this around just so you can uh, sort of have a look at the, fo the finished product. Um, so we've got that, and that's what they, uh, they come out like in the end. So I wanted a very simple way of, uh, of making them, and what I was going to do is sort of slice open some of the existing pixels or even just solder the existing pixels in line. But of course, with the cables, when I go to coil them up at the end of the year, I've got this big bulky sort of pixel stuck in the middle of the cable. It's not very nice to do, etc., etc. Um, so what I did was uh, came up with the way of using the little circuit board that is inside the pixels. Um, so what I did, you can buy the little circuit boards on AliExpress. I've handed around a, a sample there. You buy them in the panel like that. They, about a hundred of these little boards for about 25 US dollars, something like that. Um, Lots of heat shrink. I, I, I buy the big rolls of heat shrink, so you know, I've always make sure I've got plenty of heat shrink around the place. Um, 12 mil, 10 mil, and um, you know, some, some little 3 mil stuff, which I'll show you how I put them together. And then just a standard run of tools that I'm sure you've all got, soldering iron, wire strippers, etc. Uh, on the subject of wire strippers, if you're very good sighted, ignore the fact that I nicked the wires. I couldn't be bothered going downstairs to get the wire strippers, so I just use the... Um, the side cutters, so uh, the wires aren't perfect, but hopefully you'll forgive me on that. Okay, so what I use, as I said, I use a lot of four core alarm cable and or six core alarm cable, just depending on what I'm doing. It's just very convenient. Um, you know, it generally gives you your power, your data, and a, uh, a ground or two. Um, so you can see in the picture there, the tiny little board, they're all surface mount. I don't recommend, you know, trying to solder them up yourself. Um, just buy them, they're, they're about 25, 30 cents each delivered, so it's not worth the hassle. Um, very simple, cut and tin the wires to start with. Um, a little trick, hands up if you've soldered something and you haven't put the heat shrink on first, yes. <laughs> How many times have we done that or you haven't put the other end of the connector on first, so yeah, put your heat shrink on first. Uh, before you do it. Um, what I do here, I use, um, the, the reason I use three pieces of heat shrink, and sometimes I'll actually use five pieces, um, the reason being is that the 12 mil heat shrink, the clear stuff that I use, and I bought that originally to go over pixel strips, um, but the 12 mil clear heat shrink doesn't shrink down tight onto the alarm cable. So then I slide on two bits of, um, I actually use 10 mil or 8 mil, um, depending what I've got handy. Um, solder on your little board. Make sure you get the direction the right way. Of course, pixels have a data in and a data out. Um, so make sure that you solder your board the right way, otherwise your null know, pixel is not going to work, no matter what you do. Um, again, solder the back on. It's a little bit hard to see here on the, the diagram. I think the next one where I fold it back over shows it a little more clearly. So basically, the wires are both joined like that with the, the pixel sandwiched in between. And you just fold it back like that to get it sort of in line all nice and smooth. You'll notice the spare wire there, that blue one that's sticking out of the top. 
I kind of went, well, what am I going to do with this wire? I was just originally going to snip it and leave it. But then I thought, I'll actually join it together for two reasons. Number one, um, I thought, well, you know, look, if I do want to run two ground wires, it's probably handy. But number two, I worked out that if I actually make it slightly shorter, it gives a little bit of a, um, a tension, like a, a strain relief in there. So, um, you know, it's not ideal, but any little bit helps, I figure. So again, I just uh, solder that, heat shrink it, make it that little bit shorter, and um, it gives you just that teeny weeny little bit of strain relief. Clear heat shrink over the top, um, heat it up, and then the two, uh, two pieces on the end uh, go over and heat it. It's relatively water resistant. It's not waterproof. It's not going to keep a lot of water out. Um, so if it's out somewhere in the yard where it's going to get a lot of water, I'd probably recommend putting some silicone or doing whatever it is that you would normally do to waterproof um, these sorts of things. Um, but as I say, in general, it's fairly water resistant. The other thing that I have done is I've put on some of them I've put another lot of clear heat shrink over the top um, just to um, you know, hopefully add that little bit more sort of water resistance. But as I say, most of my stuff, thankfully, the way I've got my show set up is undercover. Uh, so it doesn't get a lot of... It, it's not out in the rain, it's not lying along the yard, etc. So that's essentially the, um, the finished product there. Um, the other idea that I had um, that I haven't done on, on any of these. Using the clear heat shrink, and as I say, I just bought clear because I wanted it on um, pixel strips. Um, and I've never used it for pixel strips yet, but uh, I bought it thinking, oh yeah, this would be great when I sold up pixel strip. Never did it. Um, but the benefit of the clear allows me to actually see the connections on the, um, the pixel. So if one of them's broken off, I can see it. The other idea I had was potentially soldering just a small little LED, a little surface mount LED, um, just across the, um, the terminal. So what you've got is your R, your positive, and your green terminal here. So just bridging either your R or your, your green and positive with a small LED. And then that way, if you're testing, you'll actually see that LED light. Um, you're not going to get the full three color, you know, RGB effect, but at least that way, you can solder your LED on there, send a signal to it, because it is just a normal pixel, send a signal to it, and that LED then should light up. And at least that way you know that you're getting your data in, you know that you've got power there, and so on and so forth. Um, I haven't done it yet, but uh, it was an idea I had, but have never put into practice. Um, so there you have it. That's how I do my uh, null pixels. As I say, they coil up nice and neat. They don't catch. Um, it's really simple. And um, so far, touch wood, they've, uh, they've worked really well and, uh, and haven't let me down. So yeah. Um, so any questions on that before I move on to the, uh, the next part? So you said you did it in yeah, I, um, I got really annoyed, so I started soldering him in every two metres uh, because there was one that was just giving me grief, uh, one run of, of cabling and, you know, I, I, I probably asked for it because, you know, I've got a bundle of cables that's literally about that fat, which is data and power, all cable tied together and um, it wasn't pretty. So I, yeah, as I say, and, and the beauty of this was I could just walk up to the four core alarm cable Crunch of the wire cutters, solder these in in line, nice and smooth, and, and literally I did it sort of uh, out on my balcony while I was sort of hanging over the edge there. So, yeah. I think I had nine and that's why I went, oh, maybe I did three metres because I, I spliced two in on a nine metre length. So it might be three and three. Yeah. 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 But the stupid thing is I've had a four metre run on my balcony, needed an old pixel. I reckon I've got a ten metre run on my roof, doesn't need it. Just... Sorry? 
you ask when it varies, and stuff you test, you know, in the months leading up to your show, that's right. works fine when that's going to turn on. Put it out in the yard. Yeah. And I think that's part of it. So it's those environmental conditions. And I'm, I'm almost suspecting, you know, and I, I haven't even really given a lot of thought, does the steel roof act as a ground plane? And is it somehow, you know, influencing the, uh, the signals running through those wires? We're on a wooden balcony. Those, um, you know, signals running in other cables. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. It's just so, so much and, um, you know, my, my solution was snip, solder in the null pixels and, uh, and away it went. So it was, uh, it was very handy like that. My solution, change over the cable to Cat5. Sorry? Change uh, the cable over Cat5. Yeah, but the show was live. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was sort of a case of, you know, this was exactly right. You know, two or three nights in, I wasn't happy with it. It was... Flickering and doing all sorts of weird things. So, uh, Cat5 helps, but doesn't fix the problem. Yeah. yeah.